Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Lowell. I'm a Microsoft Cloud Engineer with Champion Solutions Group, and what I wanted to show you today is a walkthrough of our Skykick Cloud Backup Solution. What Skykick does is backup Office 365 and all the different resources that are within it. Now, if you're already familiar with Office 365, you know that Microsoft does not provide a native backup solution within Office 365. There are some capabilities around things like retention policies for email. Uh, there are the recoverable items folders and things like that, but there is no true backup solution within Office 365. And so that's the role that Skykick fulfills for customers that have resources in Office 365. Skykick is a third party solution, but they back up everything that's in Office 365 and they back up to Microsoft Azure storage. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a walk through the portal, how you set it up and what it can do. So the screen that you're seeing now is the setup screen for when you first create a Skykick subscription. You'll see you got the option to have up to six daily backups. Skykick takes several backups throughout the day so that you can roll back to a specific point in time. And Skykick also supports up to unlimited data retention and unlimited data storage. So you don't have to worry about running out of storage or only having backups for a certain period of time. Uh, it's actually very flexible and it has a, a very high limit for what you can store. Now under backup sources, you can see here that you can choose to backup Exchange, SharePoint, and Microsoft Groups. Microsoft Groups is the technology underlying Microsoft Teams. So things like team channels, conversations, notebooks, and things like that would fall under Groups. Now you can choose to backup Exchange individually. You can choose just to backup SharePoint and OneDrive, or you can choose to backup all three. The only limitation here is that in order to backup Groups, you have to also backup Exchange and SharePoint because there are some dependencies there uh, with backing up the mailboxes and the OneDrive and SharePoint collections that back up those groups. So in order to back up groups, you do have to select all three, but if you don't want to back up groups, you can actually back up Exchange or SharePoint individually. Now for your credentials, you have to supply a global admin account within your Office 365 tenant. It does have to be a global admin. We do recommend that this be a dedicated account for Skykick and that you don't use another account that's used for other kinds of administration. One of the reasons for this is at the time of this recording in February 2020, there is no support for multi-factor authentication for the account you're using to back up Skykick. That is something that's in the works. Uh, they are uh, adding that functionality very soon, but for the meantime, we recommend that you have a dedicated Skykick global admin with a strong password, and just leave that as a dedicated backup account. So here you would plug in your credentials and hit validate. Skykick will go out, make sure that it can see your tenant, make sure that it has the credentials that it needs, and then it'll get a green checkbox next to validate. Down at the bottom, we're choosing where we back the backup data to. You can either choose to have Skykick take care of that storage for you, and you can select which Azure data center that you want it to reside in, or you can actually bring your own Azure storage account. In that case, you would supply the account name and the access key for that storage, and your backups can be stored in your own tenant under your own uh, governance and policy. There is no pricing difference whether you want to store the data yourself or whether Skykick does it for you. Uh, has a little bit of an added cost to it when you have your own storage account, obviously. So if you're not concerned about uh, the policy and having your own uh, data backup uh, location, then you can choose to use Skykick as your backup source. All right, once you plug in your storage account, you can again click validate. It'll go out, make sure it can talk to that storage, and then we're ready to move forward. At the bottom here, you can either click review order or click customize setup. Either one is going to go out and it's going to scrape your existing Office 365. It's going to look for all the resources. It's going to discover all your mailboxes, your OneDrive, your SharePoint, your groups. And then if you click Customize Setup, you can choose which one of those resources that you want to back up individually, or clicking Review Order will tell it that you want to back up everything. The other thing that it's going to prompt you is what you want your retention period to be. So that retention can period can be unlimited, or it can be uh, a specific number of years. You can set it for whatever number you want it to be, uh, but you do get to specify that. You'll also choose whether or not when a new resource is added, such as a new Office 365 mailbox, a new OneDrive account, a new SharePoint site collection, whether you want that to be automatically added to the backup 
and for backups to start right away, or whether you want it to be manual, in which case you're going to have to log into the portal and turn that resource on for the backup to be in, in uh, force. So we would click review order, go through, and then your Skykick backup will be live and start backing up. And now I'm going to show you uh, the demo account that we've got set up so you can see what that looks like. All right, so I'm going to go into my Champion Solutions Group Azure account here. And here's the dashboard that you're going to see once you've got your Skykick subscription set up and ready. It's going to give you a readout for the amount of storage that your different backups are accumulating, what that storage looks like over time. Under Exchange Backup, it's going to tell you how many mailboxes, shared mailboxes, public folders being backed up, when your last backup took place. Under SharePoint, it's going to give you the number of site collections, number of OneDrive accounts, and again, when that backup took place. And then for your Office 365 groups, number of groups, when the backup took place. Clicking on any one of these will dive you into those specific backups. You can also get to those along the top here under these different tabs. But first, I'm going to show you alerts. Your alerts are going to show you anything that's taking place with your backup that isn't a normal scheduled backup. So, for example, if you restore a mailbox, it'll give you the readout that the mailbox was successfully restored. If a new mailbox has been discovered or a new OneDrive, you'll get an alert here. And if there's something that is preventing a backup from taking place, in this case, it's because a mailbox isn't licensed and therefore Skykit can't access it in order to back it up. If you have a credential problem or anything else like that, it will also notify you here. And if you pull down, it'll give you an alert code, reasons for why that alert popped up. And Skykick actually has very good documentation. So in the case where you have to go and resolve something, a lot of times this will link to a knowledge base article that will give you the ability to go and remediate that alert. All right, so now we're gonna move on to Exchange. And here's your Exchange panel. So again, you've got it separated into mailboxes, public folders, and shared mailboxes. And next to each different resource, you can see this checkbox here, whether we want to back it up or not back it up. Now, a very important thing to know is that when you have a resource checked, that backup is going to go live. It's going to happen during that six times a day scheduled backup taking place. And it's going to retain all of the backed up data for that account. The billing for Skykick is based on the number of active backups taking place. So for example, if you've got 10 mailboxes actively being backed up, you're gonna be billed for 10 mailboxes. Another important thing to know is that if backups have already taken place and then you switch the backup off, no new backups are going to take place. However, all of the existing backup data for all the backups that took place already are retained. You do not lose your backups by unchecking these mailboxes or by any other resource in Skykick. Backups are always retained until one of two things happens. Either your retention period hits, let's say you have it set to retain for one year, one year passes, those backup points are automatically thrown out. Or when your subscription is turned off. So if you choose to discontinue using Skykick, at that point you do lose access to that previous data. But just turning off the backup for a mailbox does not mean that you lose the backup history for that mailbox. So that's actually a really nice feature. So for the mailboxes that are backing up, I'm going to use myself as an example. If we hit the ellipsis over on the right hand side, we can choose to restore the full mailbox, just contacts, calendar, tasks, notes, or journals. And if we click into one of those options, it's going to give us our backup prompt here. And in this case, we can choose to fully restore the mailbox if something uh, such as a deletion event occurred, or we can do a point in time restore. So let's say you get hit by something like a crypto virus and you want to roll the clock back to a specific point in time. You can choose that point in time, choose a date, choose a time, and it will roll it back to the last backup that took place as of that time. The restore type is always a soft restore, which is a merge. Skykick will never overwrite your existing data inside the mailbox. It's always going to merge the data from the backup into the existing mailbox or the existing OneDrive folder. It's never going to overwrite your data, so you don't have to worry about that. At the bottom, you can also see that you have the choice to either restore the contents directly back into the mailbox where it came from, or you can specify a new mailbox. This is good sometimes if you're using this to pull out a mailbox that uh, maybe the user isn't there anymore and you want to pull it out to archive it. You can actually restore into a blank mailbox 
and then maybe pull that mailbox out into a PST. Or if you're doing uh, you know, an investigation here and you want to restore just a specific folder, you can restore it out to a separate mailbox so that it doesn't commingle with the existing user's mailbox. So that's a really nice feature as well. All right, so that's the restore options for the full mailbox. However, we can get much more granular than that. You can do that by clicking on the username. And now this will give us the individual folders. And again, we can check on one of these and just restore that specific folder. Or we can even log in to the mailbox and see the actual individual email level. And we can check and restore those individual messages. Now this is as deep as you can go. You're never going to be able to see the content of an email within this portal. For privacy reasons, they limit you to the name of the sender, the subject, and the date. So that does give you some separation and privacy for your administrators not to see the content of the messages, but still be able to see and restore down to the individual email level. There is also a search here. So, and this is a Boolean search. You can add in um, filters and, uh, you know, and or ors. So if you're looking for something very specific, you can narrow that down and see very specific emails. So for example, if we search AD, it's going to very quickly narrow down those emails to anything that contains AD. And by the way, that search and this uh, screen also includes attachments. So if you're looking for an email with a specific attachment or specific name in the attachment, you can search by that as well. And the same is true of attachments as emails. You can't see the content of the attachment. You can only see the name of it. All right, so we're going to go back up to Exchange. The same as with the mailboxes is true with the public folders and shared mailboxes as well and shared resources. They all work exactly the same. Now we're going to hop over to SharePoint. SharePoint lets you manage by site collection. And again, we can choose whether we back it up or not. We can choose to restore a full site collection or we can zoom into that site collection and restore specific subsites, document libraries, other types of resources. And if we zoom into something like a document library, we can actually go all the way down to specific folders, restore them, and even go down to specific files. And again, we can search here as well. OneDrive for Business, same again. Very simple to administrate. All of these are uh, almost exactly alike in how they work. So very easy for your administration team to do it. And again, we can restore a full OneDrive for Business or down to the specific folders or the specific files. And again, with the OneDrive especially, this is handy to be able to go in and restore to a point in time. So again, if you get hit with a crypto virus or something malicious happens, you can actually turn the clock back, restore to the time and date that you need to. Office 365 groups, again, very similar. So you can restore the entire group, conversations, calendars, files, notebooks, and again, zoom in your notebooks, your calendars, your files, down to the individual documents and folders. Very, very simple to administrate. And then let's take a quick look at the settings. This is your credentials. So if your global administrator credentials need to be updated, you can change those credentials here. And these uh, are, again, the settings that you'll be prompted for when you set up Skykick for the first time. So this is going to ask you whether you want to backup Exchange. Do you want to auto-enable backup of new mailboxes? No or yes. And then your backup retention policy. So you can actually change that to delete backups after a certain number of years, as many as you want. Or if you leave it as indefinite, it will never delete those backups. They will always be there accessible to you. Those settings are changeable individually for Exchange, SharePoint, and Groups. It's the same three settings for all three. And then down here is where you're going to see your billing information. You'll be able to look at your billing history and your invoices and so on. And that's it, guys. That's all there is to Skykick. It's very, very simple, very, very easy to use, but also very powerful. Uh, this tool has saved me from more situations than I can count needing to bring back emails, bring back files and folders even all the way up to entire Microsoft 365 groups that were deleted. So extremely handy tool. I hope this helps you. I hope you guys take advantage of this. And if you can uh, reach out to your account managers or one of our staff at Champion, we'd be happy to give you a live demo, 
set you up with a uh, trial account for a couple of weeks. You can try this on your own and uh, hope you get a lot of use out of it. So thanks for taking the time and we hope to speak to you soon.